So when we're working with Wireshark and we're analyzing TCP, we got to know what a sequence number is. So what is it? Well, here I went ahead and pulled up the TCP RFC, RFC 9293, and I went down to 3.4 sequence numbers. And this is so simple. Check out what it says. A fundamental notion in the design of TCP is that every octet of data sent over a TCP connection has a sequence number. So basically a sequence number and a byte of data. Every byte is assigned a sequence number. Usually they're sent in blocks called segments. So that's exactly what a sequence number is. It's just a representation, a numeric representation of a byte. That way if that byte ever goes missing, we know which one to retransmit. So to help us to fully understand sequence numbers, we don't want to just talk about it or get a definition from an RFC, but we want to practice it. The more practice you get with sequence numbers, the better you're going to understand them. Now I included a link in the description down below for the PCAP that I'm going to walk you through very quickly. You can download that and you can follow right along. Okay, so this is just a simple conversation. We have here TLS Handshake is the name of the packet capture. Uh, I'm looking at 118 packets, no big deal. Just a single connection, single conversation. So we can see here there's a connection initiator. That's our client to server. It's happening out to port 443. And if we take a look at that SYN, look a little deeper into our detail view on the bottom left over here, you're going to expand TCP. Coming down here to sequence number raw. So this is the raw value. And if you look at this raw value, uh, notice over here on the hexadecimal view, that's a four byte value. Now the station is going to come up with this number. Some stations do it different ways depending on the kernel stack that's in use. Uh, let's just call it a high number value that's derived. And the idea is that it's unique, that it's tough to guess this number. This is called the initial sequence number. Now Wireshark does us a solid. If you take a look at just above this, we have the relative sequence number. What Wireshark does is it just says, you know, I'm just going to zero this number out for you because you're going to be countering forward from this number based on the amount of data that you send in this stream. Now, as human beings, you all have a tough time counting from anything other than zero. So I'm going to do the zero out for you. So this is just relative. In fact, you know that if you come up and actually click that value, you notice over here in the hexadecimal, that you still see values. It's not zero. So this is just relative to this conversation, to this connection. We're starting at sequence number zero. Now the sin bit, since this is a sin flag, this is going to consume, we'll use that word, one byte of sequence number. All right, so what I should expect is that the receiver of this sin takes my sequence number, adds one, we're going to call that a ghost byte, it's just a basically a, a false byte. It's just the sin will consume one byte. Uh, sins and fins do that, but the other flags don't. Like acknowledgement does not consume a byte, just sin. So what I would expect is in the opposite direction, I'm going to see 7175 come back as an acknowledgement number. So let's see if that happens. I'm going to come down here to the next packet, 7175. So basically what my link partner did, the server, it said, I, I see your ISN, I raised you one, and I act that number back to you. So now I know I'm synchronized. I know that that server heard my initial sequence number, and I know they are ready to start receiving data, me to them. They send me their starting sequence number. You see how this 366610501511 number, big arbitrary number, and that number comes across from the server. I then take this number, 0511, gonna go down to the final packet of the three-way handshake, 0512, I just added a one to their sequence number and I echoed that back to them. I just sent that back as an acknowledgement number and now we're synchronized. That's why it's called Syn People, we're synchronizing sequence numbers. All right, so I sent my sequence number to them, they plus one, they sent their sequence number to me, I plus one, now we're ready to go. Now let's actually see how this moves forward. If I come down here to packet number four, so this is client server, there are 517 bytes in this packet. Okay, this is a client hello. I'm not going to dig too much into that right now. I'm just going to stay on sequence number. It's 517 bytes. So I'm starting at the true number is down here, 7175. I'm just using the last four digits of that number there. Relatively, this is sequence number one. So what I do is I take one. That's my starting sequence number for this segment. I'm sending 517 bytes. So the next expected sequence number in this direction from client to server the next one that I use will start at 518. I, I added my sequence number to my length, 
and that's how I get my next starting sequence number. At the same time, in the opposite direction, the server, if this segment is received, the server is going to come back and say 518 as an acknowledgement saying, hey, I got that 517. I took your one, added the 517. Now this is the next sequence number that I expect for you, from you. Basically, I'm good to 518. I got, I got those bytes. You don't have to retransmit them. Now let's just say I didn't get this ACK and I send this data again. Well, the receiver is going to go, hey, I'm, I'm good to 518. Here's another ACK. Like, didn't you already get my acknowledgement number? I'm, I'm good. I'm good to 518. No need to retransmit. Now next, the server, let's just do one more packet of this while we're on sequence numbers. I'm going to come down here to packet number six. So here I'm on sequence number one in this direction, 518 in the opposite direction. Client to server, 518. Server to client right now at this moment is one. Sending 1460 in this direction. The next starting value in this direction is going to be 1461. Let's just sneak down to the next packet. I lied. I mean, we're, we're not going to do just one more. We're going to do two more because you are a packet person, and so am I, and we love this stuff. Sequence number is 1461. So we advanced our sequence number server to client. We're sending 662. We add those two numbers together. The next starting value that we're going to begin at in this direction, 2123. At the same time, if I successfully receive these as a client, I'm going to take 2123 and I'm going to echo that back to the server. 2123. What does that mean? I'm good. 1460. I'm good. 66. Two. So now this tells the server, I got it. You don't have to send anything else. I got your sequence numbers. So sequence numbers might be large. They might be cumbersome. They might be difficult to understand. But with practice, we can see that every incrementing sequence number represents one byte. It tells me whether data that I sent was successfully received or if that data has to be retransmitted. So hopefully this helps you make sense of sequence numbers. Don't be afraid of them. Keep on practicing and I'll see you all on another video.